Hey all and welcome Borderlands 3 fam to my final flak build before Tiny Tina's Wonderlands comes out in just a couple of weeks which we'll definitely be covering on this channel by the way. So after about 400 Borderlands 3 videos, 70-ish of which are builds and a ridiculous amount of time playing this game, this is by far my favorite way to play. So if you guys want to crush any aspect of this game whilst playing flak, whether you have all the DLC or none of the DLC, I've got you guys sorted. Starting with the weapons at our favorite firing range, Gravy. In the top left, I'll have all the gun names that are currently on screen. In the bottom left, I'll have where to fire those guns. And in the bottom right, if it says WD, it means that weapon can also world drop in that area of the game. AKA, if it's from a DLC, it only world drops in that DLC. And if it doesn't say WD, it means it only drops from the named boss that I wrote on screen. Now, any weapon that is viable in this game, you can use with this build. It's pretty much the point of most of my builds, just to have a huge variety of weapons that you can. The ones that are showing on screen are pretty much just my personal favorites and just absolutely annihilate all of the bosses. For example, I'm pretty sure every gun I currently show on screen kills Grave Warden under two seconds each, which is kind of ridiculous. That's just how much variety there are in these weapons. For example, the Fake Hips, arguably the best weapon in the entire game. Plus, there'll be a bunch of other really good weapons that I can't include in this video just due to time, but also I'm 50 out of 50 on my backpack right now and I cannot take any more. But all the ones I've recommended so far are my personal favorites for uh, regular bossing, which 95% of them double as good at mobbing weapons as well. But if you do want to verse the big, big bosses like Wotan, like the raid boss, like the Guardian Takedown, there are a few that are really just stand out from the rest. For example, my personal favorites would be the Sandhawk, as you can see, just obliterates uh, Wotan. The Monarch is always a great staple, but the King slash Queen's Coal is by far my highest recommendation, my personal favorite weapon of all time as Flak. And if you haven't messed with it, please do. If you want to verse Hemo, Hermie, whatever you want to call him, the King slash Queen's Coal is uh, factually the best weapon, factually by meaning my opinion. Um, does a ridiculous amount of damage, but also, if you didn't know, actually heals you for a portion of damage dealt. So you physically cannot down if you are hitting things whilst in Gorilla's Linus fade away as Flak because you're getting that much health regen. Once you run out of fade away, just switch to a Monarch and that has so many pellets, high fire rate. It'll get your action skill cooldown back pretty much instantly back into fade away and you're just spamming King's Queen's Call until they're gone. I also included a bang stick just for the memes for people who are around at the start of the game you'll know if you've never messed with it before I'll leave a guide linked in the description if you want to check it out it's a purple so it's kind of hard to get but it is hilarious that it works that well still this late into the game. The mobbing weapons that I'd recommend the Garcia is amazing please gearbox make it fully automatic again it was so much fun uh, but still a really good weapon. The Hellwalker the goat of shotguns it sounds cool does a ton of damage it, it's just fun to use. Other weapons, the Reflux, if you ever want to do the Guardian Takedown, anywhere there's a ton of mobs and you want to clear them quickly, the Reflux is sick at doing that. Change so much damage together. Only problem is it runs out of ammo very, very quickly, so you definitely want to bring a Cart Purse Launchpad Artifact with you to jump up, slam on the ground, and get ammo back in the mag of the gun you're currently using or the capacity. Now, if you're trying to run the Trials Super Zoomy Quick, the Multi-Tap paired with the OPQ to Atlas Weapon, so you can use the same class mod, is my personal favorite pinpoint accuracy super high fire rate ton of damage you just clear them in ultra zoomy speeds now as for the anointments they are incredibly important if you want to try and do as much damage as you just saw on screen in your game to try and get the best ones you possibly can the main one you want to aim for is on action skill end weapon damage is increased by 100 percent for a short time that is what you want to have on pretty much all of them. A good backup is next to Mag's Elemental Damage. It's a good backup, but also probably the one you want to have on Elemental Locked Weapons, like the Crit SMG, only comes in Shock Damage. So if you can get next to Mag's Fire, that's how I did so much damage against Grave Lord to him, because we're doing both those elements. Now, the King slash Queen's Call is the only uh, weapon that you want to have fade away active weapon damages increased by 150% because you're only really going to use this in Gorillas in the Mist fadeaway, where the rest you'll be using three-shot fadeaway for your setup. Which, as you can see, all of the other weapons in here will have bonus 100% ASC annoyance on them, which is the goal, but can take a super long time. So if you're on PC and you want a PC save file, I've got you sorted. It's in the description down below if you want to mess with it. Now, as for the gear, the shields are insane. This one in particular, the Revolter shield, is by far the highest damage output shield. And if you get action skill start, activate any effects that trigger on shield break or fill, you'll be able to loop shock and rage for 15 seconds every time you hit fade away, which should be every 15 seconds, meaning you get 200% bonus shock damage and 50% extra fire rate, which it doesn't say on the card, but that's what shock and rage means. 
which is kind of insane for your damage output. But you will require DLC 6 to have that, so if you don't, don't stress there's other shields that are really good as well. For example, the Old God from DLC 2, bonus elemental damage and resistance is also kind of huge. The stopgap, if you are struggling to survive, this is just damage immunity for you. It's a base game one. You can also get the Super Soldier from DLC 5 from Arms Race, which is just a DLC upgraded version of the stopgap, but both work perfectly fine. And then the Snowshoe drops from the Melee 1 takedown. This thing or any other Nova Shield like the Frozen Heart or I believe the Nova Burn, I think is what it's called are kind of insane. Pretty much every time you hit Fade Away, a Cryo or a Fire Nova will spread out from where you are, just blowing up everything, which is kind of dangerous when it comes to barrels, but for clearing out mobs is kind of awesome. With the Snowshoe, my personal favorite, because you can get the original Nova and then the passive can roll with a second Nova. So you proc one as you start Fade, and as the Fade Away an um, animation ends, you hit another Nova, blowing up the second wave of enemies that are running at you. It's awesome. As for grenades, cloning Hunter Seeker or Mitosis Hunter Seeker, if you can get them, are the way to go. First of all, if you throw them, they shoot bullets, which deal gun damage, which do damage themselves, but also stack up the pearl, and they also stack up your class mod, which is kind of awesome. So as you're running into a boss fight, chuck a few of those. You've instantly got your kill skills up. You've instantly got your pearl stacked up, and you're doing like 200%-ish plus damage instantly without even having fired a shot. A class mod that it stacks is the Bounty Hunter. You can get these from World Drops, or you can also get them from Preston in Tanzania Ruins. Essentially, Flak, whenever he deals gun damage, has a 3% chance to stack his kill skills, which you can literally get by just throwing a couple Hunter Seekers. Now, these are my end game rolls, my best of my best rolls. They take a really long time, but they are well worth it. For example, the one on the right boosts my Jacob's weapons by 104%, which is why if you're looking at the first clips, like I can I can never get that much damage, literally anointments and stacking your elemental types well and having good class mod passives and good artifact passives is the difference between an eh build to the disgusting damage you saw at the start of the screen, at the start of the video. And the goal is to have one for every type of weapon, every brand of weapon that you can possibly get your hands on. A secondary good choice is a stalker mod just for mobbing situations. They're not great for bossing, but for mobbing when you're stacking up your kills, that is a decent second choice as well. As for artifacts, again, you're going to see some disgustingly good passives on here, but these are the goal to aim for. You want to try and get all brands of company men with really, really good passives. For example, you can see my Jacobs one up there has 50% bonus weapon damage, critical hit damage. The accuracy, you'd probably prefer to have a reload speed or fire rate, but I wasn't arguing when I'm getting area effect damage, action skill cooldown rate, and magazine size on my passives. Like, that's really, really good. You want to try and get that on all of them if you can, but it will take a long time. And again, it is DLC 6. So if you're in base game only, Unfortunately, you just blatantly will have a huge drop off in damage because of this, but it is the best choice out of the base game options. Snowdrift Victory Rush, one, you can zip around really quick, so it's good for getting around fast, but also uh, survivability, getting out of a situation is great. And Victory Rush is good for mobbing for stacking up your uh, kills, pretty much. You increase your movement speed and increase your damage for 60 seconds, which is pretty good. Uh, the Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge is the DLC 2 option. If you don't have perfect, perfect company men rolls, the pearl is blatantly stronger for most weapons. Unless they're a slow single um, pellet firing weapon, the pearl is going to win hands down every time because you'll have 115% weapon damage stacked up and fire rate and mag size uh, bonuses can roll as the passives. And just quickly, pretty much on every build video I've ever posted, a bunch of people are like, oh my god, he does so much damage, he must have like a thousand guardian rank. I do have a pretty high Guardian rank, but as you can see in the bottom left, I have 483 unspent tokens. So all of these passives actually came from my first playthrough, and I stopped immediately after that because I knew a bunch of people would say, hey, your build is just because your Guardian rank. It is not. It is literally the passives, the annoyance, the elemental stacking. If you do everything right, like I said in the build, you've got the damage at the start, believe me. Now for the all-important skill tree, we are going Fade Away, we're going Not My Circus, and we're going Unblinking Eye. This one essentially hit repetitive critical hits and you do increase critical hit damage. Not My Circus means whenever you come out of Fade Away, Pet will taunt the enemies in your area, which means they're not shooting at you and you also do increased damage from the skill points you spent. Furious Attack, 5 points in here. Shooting enemies increases your gun damage, which is great. 5 points in Overclock. After reloading, you get bonus fire rate and just by standard, you have bonus fire rate as well. Turn Tail and Run, 3 points. Stand still while you're shooting, you get increased gun damage and fire rate. And run if you need to survive because you're going to get uh, damage reduction, also health regen. One point in Lick the Wounds essentially means Pet can revive you when you're down to some stupid barrel on a corner you didn't see or 
a stupid COV rocket launcher. Whatever happens, pet should pick you up. Sometimes they derp, just crawl to them and they'll definitely pick you up. Three points and eager to impress. Essentially, whenever you get a kill, you get action skill cooldown time, which is great. Really need that. Five points in hidden machine. Essentially, whenever you are in fadeaway or enemies can't see you, aka linking up here with not my circus when they're shooting at pet instead, you get increased 30% damage. Three points in the fast and the furious, gun damage increase, pet damage increase, that so doesn't really matter, and movement speed increase. The power inside the capstone, essentially 25% bonus weapon damage or 50% bonus weapon damage for 15 seconds when you go into fadeaway if you're at full health. You get the double. If you're not at full health, you'll just get the standard 25%. Now, as for red tree, three points and leave no trace is huge. For every pellet that hits a critical hit, you get 36% chance to put a bullet back in the magazine of that weapon, which is fantastic for shotguns that have multiple pellets because if you hit a critical hit, aka if you're just using fadeaway ever, you're instantly filling your magazine of your weapon and you just won't run out of bullets. Five points in a planetary stalker. Kill skill increases your damage. Just grab five points in that. Five points in hunter's eye. A bit of bonuses from our class mod there as well. Increases your uh, critical hit damage, your armor damage, and your damage reduction. And all of those bonuses work to all bosses because we're using a bounty hunter class mod as well. Three points in headcount is essential. Whenever you hit a critical hit, you get action skill cooldown rate. That is huge for pretty much every situation, but a huge one in particular is the raid boss whenever you're using the king slash queen's call you run out of fade you want that back instantly use a uh, multiple pellet weapon for example a monarch was the one i'd recommend high fire rate multiple pellets is going to hit so many critical hits so quickly it'll instantly refresh your uh, action skill cooldown you'll be able to jump back and fade and start using your king slash queen's call again now for two fang only use it if you use single pellet weapons regularly i used to use multi pellet weapons primarily so i just didn't use it but if you use single pellet ones, you add an extra projectile per shot to 25% of your shots, which is fantastic. For single pellet weapons, it's just a 25% uh, weapon damage increase. But for multi pellet weapons like a Hellwalker with 10 pellets, you're only adding one extra. So from 10 to 11 pellets, it's not that big of a damage increase. So up to your choice. If you aren't going to use this, chuck the five points in here instead. Uh, three points in big game is huge. It increases your hunt skill duration and skill effects. I'll point out all of those in a second. It includes the most dangerous game kill skill. This thing is huge. Increased gun damage, crit damage, handling, pet damage is all right. And it's for 120 seconds. Try and get as many points as you possibly can of bio class mod into this skill. It's huge. One point in galactic shadow increases critical hit damage and one point in mega ball. 20% of the time you're shooting an enemy anywhere, it'll count as a critical hit, which is huge for damage. Uh, head count, getting action skill cooldown, and putting bullets back in the mag all the time. As for the beautiful blue tree, we have three points in Persistent Hunter, increases our gun damage and action skill duration. That doesn't always come into play when you're using three-shot fade, but it's really helpful whenever you use the king slash queen's call. Plus two points into Ferocity. We don't actually need the skill. It just gets us down the tree. Frenzy, five points in there, plus anything you can get from your class mod is an added bonus. When paired with He Bites, just one point in here. Essentially, pet, whenever they shoot an enemy or get shot by an enemy, or reflect the bullets back at them, stacking up Frenzy. At 10 stacks, we have five points in there. It is 40% bonus damage, which is huge, plus any extra added percent from your class mod is also really, really helpful. Now, as the final thing, we have four points in Agility Training in Purple Tree. Now, I said at the start, this is not a DLC-dependent build, which is true. This is literally only uh, reload speed, which is not necessary. It's just a uh, helpful quality of life thing. So if you don't have the Purple Tree, don't stress. Take those four points. Go over to Red Tree. You can get a reduced uh, amount of reload speed if you want that. Or instead, you can put it in Damage down in Grim Harvest. If you already stacked that up earlier, you can use it to get increased uh, action skill cooldown rate. A little bit of extra health if you want some survivability. Or we can even go down a little bit in blue tree if you'd like as well. As for the pet choice, we are going the Gunslinger Jabber pretty much all the time. Mostly because I'm lazy to switch it, to be honest. But essentially, they have a ranged weapon, the SMG. It's a fast fire rate, which means they'll stack Frenzy up really quickly. Which is good, but also because they're ranged, they don't get curb stomped by people like Wotan. Like the other ones do. In mobbing situations, if you're not worried about them getting curb stomped, you can use the Spider Ant Scorcher. It gives you uh, bonus elemental damage, a chunky amount, and health regen as well. Or you can use the Great Horn Skag, which increases your damage by even more. 5 and then 10% damage and gun damage, respectively. Now, I said before I would point out the hunt skills. These are really useful. One, because you're boosting them by a big game. But also, you stack them by using the Bounty Hunter class mod and Hunter Seekers before going into a boss fight. The reason you want to throw them is because it will stack up the most dangerous game, 
which with our extra skill points gives us 42% gun damage, 16% critical hit damage. It will stack Interplanetary Stalker, which uh, 3 stacks, 3 times 13, it's making me do math right now, 39% extra damage there. Then in blue tree, we have Frenzy, that's also a hunt skill. It doesn't actually stack from throwing the Hunter Seekers, Pet is the only one that can stack this, but it is boosted by having points in big game. And then finally in green tree, we have the third one, which is Furious Attack, which increases gun damage. At max stacks, you have 20% bonus damage. Add all of that up, it's at least a bonus 100 to 150% bonus weapon damage before you even fire a shot in a boss fight which if you haven't messed with many builds before that is a huge amount of damage and just before i sign out just want to say a huge thank you to you guys the community of borderlands 3 is by far the best gaming community i've seen out there like it's honestly not even close before this game this channel was on about 300 subs and now we're chilling at like 25k so there's a ridiculous amount of you guys when i honestly think about it and thank you very much for all of your support over the last two years it's been incredible Another note, if you guys are wondering where the heck have I been for the last few months, I haven't been posting. I haven't actually stopped making YouTube videos the entire time I have been posting, and you might have seen it by the community posts, but I made a second channel, which is definitely not the kind of second channel that you post B-grade content to, because each video takes about 70 hours plus to make, which is why I post one every two to three weeks. When Tiny Tina's Wonderlands comes out, I might be a little bit more busy, but I'll be posting on both at the same time. Other reason is it is Minecraft content only, which I know not everyone that plays Borderlands 3 is going to enjoy Minecraft content. But if you do also mess with Minecraft, I now have two channels with dope content for you guys to enjoy. So if you want to check that out, I'll link it on screen, I'll link it in the description, or you can just search it. It's Cody M rather than Cody McHugh. You don't have to remember how to spell my last name. And uh, yeah, other than that, hope you have a fantastic day. Catch you guys in the next video and a live stream. Till then, adios.